Hey folks, GGZ here. Welcome to my Operation 3 Tour of Duty 3 Guide. This is the first one I've done. Hopefully you enjoy it. Leave a like if you do. Put a lot of work into this. Let's complete this as fast as possible. Now, how it works. Tour of Duty is very simple. You are simply going to be earning stars, and earning stars is going to earn you rewards. There are tons of rewards and earning stars can be done in a variety of ways. First of all, you're going to have daily stars. These are a section that are going to refresh every day. You're going to have generic stars that can be completed inside of any game mode. You're going to have versus stars, which can only be completed inside of the versus modes of Gears 5. And finally, you're going to have PvE stars. These can be completed in Horde or Escape. These generally net you the most stars in my opinion. So you have generic versus and PvE stars as your three options. Now you can re-roll, which means to refresh an objective each day for free. Following re-rolls are going to cost iron, but you get one free each day. Again, I recommend PvE or generic for your re-roll. You also finally have medals. So along with your daily stars, you're going to be earning medals. These are things that you can complete as you're doing other objectives. Try to combo them to earn as much stars as possible. I'm going to give you the tips and tricks to try to earn medals and daily stars at the same time, combo them together and complete the Tour of Duty as fast as you can. Remember, completing games such as Versus, Horde, Escape also net you a star. So simply playing the game and playing enough, you will eventually complete the Tour of Duty. So even if you hate grinding and you hate medals, simply playing the game is going to net you a lot of stars. So let's get into it, let's get through the tips and tricks and let's give some gameplay examples. Welcome to the tips and tricks section. Now I'm not going to bore you and post every single medal. I'll try to do as many as I can where I feel they're relevant, but I'm not going to do every single one. What I'm going to do is showcase how you can combo medals, how certain medals can be achieved easier than you may think with a farming technique, and just general tips and tricks to make the whole tour feel easier and much more comfortable. A lot of people are turned away from the tour because they think they have to sign in and do a load of grinding, and honestly... Most, if not all, are a five minute job, some are a ten minute job, and yes, some are a little bit of a grind, but you are working on them as you do other challenges. Let's see how we farm through this tour of duty and re rank general. In the description will be timestamps to the certain specific medals, so if you're ever struggling or you get a daily that you might be stuck on, check the description, there will be a timestamp, you'll be able to click it and watch how I farmed it. Dealing daily damage is one that's going to crop up a lot. This one is deal 70,000 damage in Horde or Escape. It sounds a lot of damage. It actually only takes a few seconds. Horde, custom game, private, turn the bots off and start it at wave 50. This is going to allow you to kill the boss and deal a load of damage. Play as an engineer, spam a load of level 4 turrets down. It's going to take care of it, no problem. Whilst this is going on, you're going to be working on the Carnage Medal, which is dealing 15 million damage, and this is generic, this counts in all game modes. Working on the Boss Hunter Medal, which is kill 30 bosses, you're going to be collecting power, you're going to be dealing damage in Horde, you're going to be potentially eliminating drones at the same time, you're also going to be surviving waves. So each time you get a Horde daily mission, you want to be checking if you can combo it with anything. I know a lot of people have probably already been turned away thinking it's a load of PvE gameplay which I hate. This doesn't help me but the reality is you can do the entire tour by playing versus but this is the quick way to do it. As you're playing the game you're going to naturally get these simple medals. Get 45 eliminations basically takes like one wave of horde. And at the same time, you're going to be working on the Juvie medal, you're going to be working on reject kills, you're going to be working on headshot kills overall. Now for me, I got my headshot medals legit, I just played the game through Horde and I played online multiplayer. If you really want to speed through the medals, you can just turn on inaccessibility, the aim assist for beginner modes, turn on beginner Horde, grab a sniper with Faz, and when you aim, it's literally going to be an aimbot. If you combo those two together, you're going to have 750 headshots in absolutely no time. However, a lot of the challenges you're going to get naturally over time. So I wouldn't sit and farm headshots as a challenge because that time could be better put into something else. And again, you're naturally going to get the headshots such as Juvie kills and Marcus's headshots. Now you can combo this by running through 
the clock or running through hive past hive now marcus's ultimate basically gives him lock on if you run to the start of a checkpoint and you make sure before you go into the checkpoint room in an escape you have your ultimate that means when you restart the checkpoint your ultimate is going to be available now on this hive once you've ran through it and you've got your ultimate you can run to the end turn on your ultimate spray down a load of juvies that's going to give you a load of headshot kills a load of juvie kills a load of xp for escape and then you just simply hit restart act and when it reloads you're going to have your ultimate so there's like loads of ways to combo things as you can see in this game not only did i deal 70,000 damage in versus i i was also working towards the versus matches as swarm I was reviving teammates. A good way to get teammate revives is to simply play as Jack in Horde. What you can do is you can boost revives. You can let somebody go down. So you start the wave on a high difficulty. You just put a load of bots on and you can boost Jack's revive that, that way. You can also get a friend in and revive them. If you really don't want to do that, you can just go into a ranked match or into a arcade game with a load of bots. Let the bots down you and revive each other that way we were also capturing rings going in and out so that captures rings fast letting arcade players break them and then killing them and then recapturing is a quick way to get all of the medals speaking of only taking a game or two the execution medal again executions are kind of difficult to do in versus in the middle of a king of a hill game you really don't want to be doing a full execution so a chainsaw kill counts as an execution so if you ever think you can sneak up on somebody with a chainsaw or you just want to sit for a game or two and chainsaw some bots in arcade you're going to get that medal really really quickly grenade kills and explosive kills are currently bugged previously you had to go into the arcade and try and get explosive kills which was a bit awkward right now explosive kills work in horde you can just play as keegan pull out his boom shot kill three people and boom there's your star whilst you're playing as keegan you may as well hop into some horde and just eliminate some people with a snub and also start to eliminate people with the hammer burst these are his two starting weapons so you're always going to have them super quick easy medals to get okay so you know how to read you can read the tour of duty and you can do the medals so far i'm not doing a great job of actually comboing some things so let's change that some of the pve medals look like a right pain let's ease that if you have clay and carmine you can do this you can perform 150 executions gain 250 eliminations with a retro lancer kill drone elites and get clay and carmine kills all in one motion also whilst that's going on you'll be you'll be doing challenges in the background so how do you do it well it's very simple drone elites are going to spawn on like wave seven eight nine those kind of waves so just fire up your game on wave seven eight nine fire up the retro lancer and the retro charges count as not only a retro kill but also an execution and an and a drone elite elimination so you can run around and get these medals as a combination. If you don't have Clayton Carmine, you can run around with Kate. Kate has the same and you'll also be getting Caitlyn power. Also, you can put points into movement speed as a perk. So you run around faster. So you get the medal done quicker. You can also then play with the torque bow as he spawns with the torque bow. Or you can pick a class such as an explosive class, purchase the torque bow, grab the ammo boxes and farm the torque bow executions. This got me an absolute ton of medals because I was doing like seven medals at a time and I think this one was a really nice little combination. Speaking of good combinations, executions and damage sync up really well with Clayton on the hive. If you head into escape and you load up the level and you keep refreshing until you have basically rejects at the very beginning once you've got rejects you just go in assassinate all the rejects you can do just by staying quiet and sneaking up behind them and then once you're done you simply escape restart hive and boom you're very very quickly gonna get all of the executions you need and also damage uh basically you need to do i think it's 200,000 damage with clay and carmine and as you can see that when you'll get the medals uh, which doesn't take long 60 executions is about half the damage of 200,000 so they sync up pretty well occasionally you're going to get some dailies that are a little bit annoying not because they're difficult to do or take a long time it's because they're so trivial you kind of wonder why they're asking you to do them this one was collect power so i figured whilst collecting power i may as well run around and get bad eliminations as that's also a medal so if you ever get collect power you may as well just play as bad and work on your power collection medal 
sometimes you're going to have to get some executions in versus again i just did this in a ranked match and just chainsawed a couple people around some corners if you want to be super quick about it you could just do it in an arcade game with bots the same way also if you want to win as cog team or you want to win as the locust team a good idea is to play arcade or just simply play basically player versus ai and you're always going to win so that's a quick way to farm your wins Obviously, we're going to be playing a little bit of Horde, and to be honest, once your characters get leveled up, it's going to become more enjoyable, and you might even find yourself playing a 1-50 to 50 just to see if you can do it. Trust me, 1-50 to 50 on Masters is no joke, and it's actually surprisingly fun, even as a PvP player, I've enjoyed it. And soon enough, once you've played enough Horde, you're going to get all of the medals for the Horde, like damage executions and rounds staying alive i recommend basically always playing on advanced then you're at least always working towards that medal that is complete x amount of rounds on advance there are also some really simple medals such as get heavy kills you can go into a horde match wait say into the higher waves of the horde snipe a heavy weapon and then get a couple kills with it or you can head into the scion heavy escape kill one of the scions and they'll have a mulcher and that's a really quick way to get heavy kills and it's much more reliable there's also ones for escaping hives as multiple characters you can run through the clock or the surge really really quickly and that is a great way to level up characters so you can escape with five different characters in a couple minutes and you just repeat that a couple times and you're going to have it done it's going to be a 10 minute job um, also, if you play on advanced whilst you're escaping a ton of XP, which is going to make your characters level up a lot faster, obviously as your character gets stronger, all of this stuff becomes easier and easier. It does seem a little bit boring, I know, to run through the surge on advanced plus and basically get XP, but at the moment you get 2000 XP per run and basically within a few runs you're going to be reaching level 9 10 and that's when your character comes alive after that you can choose a character you want to focus on but there's a there's a lot of things you can do to just make the leveling process easier and that's one of them you know occasionally you're going to get one that's like kill a warden killing the warden is a little bit annoying because you think where can i farm wardens i can't always force them to spawn in horde um, I found that if you go onto the labyrinth there is always a warden that you can go in there and focus um, there are also a couple other hives that you can do, um, but the labyrinth seem to have a lot of wardens and I found that a really quick method just to simply jog in there with Mac and bleed headshot him down and you get the bleed card really really soon with him. So you don't have to do any farming for that, that's just basically a free kill and free stars. As we head into the Tour of Duty, you can see that I have indeed unlocked the General rank. I've earned the Armoured Ronan Cantus, and I've done all of the challenges required to get me to the General rank. I've completed 74% of medals, and to end it, I thought I'd just give a quick note on some of the medals I got. So all of these we've covered, revives were done with Jack, executions were done with Clayton in the escape, headshots with Faz, damage is going to be dealt regularly, taut bows we've covered with Clayton, eliminations with the Markser is going to also be with Faz, you can use the same technique as you used with the sniper, retro lancer we've had covered, long shot is going to be Faz, we've covered the hammer burst and lancer eliminations are probably going to be gained playing online or playing as basic horde with marcus surviving 100 acts is a bit of a grind but if you speed run through the surge you're going to level up all of your characters as fast as possible and at the same time you're going to be getting 50 acts of escape on difficulty or higher you're going to get xp and you're going to get kills so that's going to be like a 15 plus star combo so if you're escaping with coal that's another four on top of that and on top of that again you're going to be escaping with five different characters as you can see i haven't even touched the other remaining part of the hive buster for horde we're pretty much all done and all spoke about the last thing i need to do is collect power but i honestly didn't really enjoy running around collecting power and i didn't play as caitlin and i didn't really pick up much power whilst playing but i'm still halfway done and it's only a couple weeks into the tour i'm sure if you play a bit more horde you'd get that medal but as you can see, we didn't need it. For the heroes, again, whilst playing as Cole in that surge, we also got 250 eliminations. We've spoke about the offensive carnage with probably Faz, as you'll be playing a lot of Faz. The revives we've covered, the snub, and the bad eliminations we've covered. When it comes to versus, the classic quick play games are going to be really easy to get. Uh, and also we've covered the cog victories. 
The Swarm are a little bit more tough, but you can get those in AI. The last one really is Executions, but again, you can cover that with Chainsaws. Now, when it comes to ranked, obviously, you have to be a little bit of an above average player to consistently win ranked games. But here are some tips. 2v2 Nasher is going to give you the most rounds. There are potentially seven round victories. So that's only going to be 13 games plus of ranked that you would have to win. Uh, so if you're just purely interested in doing the medals and getting out of ranked and you don't really enjoy it that much, play 2v2 Nashers. Um, the rest are just four stars for obviously playing ranked team deathmatch and escalation. Escalation is going to be the more tough one to play because it's a slightly more niche game mode, but it's only 10 rounds, which is roughly three games. Gridiron is the brand new game mode and I picked up quite a few points in here. Basically, denying meant killing a flag carrier, and getting 50 Nasha kills is not really too difficult for most players if you're playing a lot of Gears of War. Even if you're a bad player, it just comes down to participation. You're eventually going to get 25 round wins on Gridiron. Scoring a touchdown is simple. Obviously, you just get the flag and touch it, and that's three stars. And they've now altered the Gridiron Performer Medal, and it's only 1,000 points in 10 gridiron matches and 1000 points is basically a handful of kills again that's effectively participate in 10 games you now have an extra tab which is versus events and these are weekly events that can give you rewards now this week's event was a sniper guardian variant and as a result we ended up just playing a load of sniper matches and we've got all of them and that was a massive boost to the star basically total because you could just chill, play some sniping, and rank up your Torah duty very quickly due to the easy stars. And also you got some free skins for playing it as well, which was nice. So that's pretty much it. That's my tour guide. I've tried to condense what has been two weeks of farming for the general Ronin encounters into, into a short video. Uh, I didn't want it to be hours and hours long, which I could have done, but hopefully I've presented the information in a good way. As always, this channel is effect completely monetary free. I don't really make anything off YouTube at all. <laughs> if you want to support the effort I've put in, I've just spent eight hours editing this and two weeks capturing all this footage, and you like what you see, there are a few ways to support me. You can follow on Twitter, at ZTwitch. You can follow Twitch, that is twitch.tv forward slash GGZ. If you want to go a step further, you can subscribe and become a loyal, loyal Zicario and uh, support me and my content. You can like, comment and subscribe on YouTube for free. They're really, really good ways to help promote the channel. And sh feel free to share it with new players that might not understand the tour of duty and want a little bit of help if you want to donate directly to the content goal which is a monthly goal i set for each month then there is a link to paypal i have to do i have to do a disclaimer that all tips are non-refundable and please do have the bill payers permission but i really do appreciate anyone that supports the content goal as it allows me to do what i can do on youtube slash twitch for as long as i am doing it streaming 10 hours making videos recording for weeks doing detailed gameplay breakdowns doing patch analysis doing some theory doing skin showcases guides tips i've basically got everything covered and i've i've put in a ton of work these past seven months so if you've enjoyed everything i've been doing i um, hope everybody's staying safe with the current virus situation um that is me ggz signing out hopefully you enjoyed this video Peace.